Folks, welcome to Vector Calculus. Folks, welcome to lecture one of Vector Calculus. Today we're going to be taking a look at conic sections. Now, first thing you're going to be asking is why? Why do we even have to learn these things? It's because they're everywhere, okay? The conic sections are four shapes, namely the circle, the ellipse, the parabola, and the hyperbola. And I've already messed one of them up. So these four shapes are everywhere in the world. For example, for example, the hyperbola is in use in Apple devices so that they can locate well, where you are in the world. Okay, using satellite imagery and hyperbolas, Apple finds where you're living and uh, where you're using their apps from. Okay, so this is used in geolocation services. All right, let's go ahead and check that out. All right, folks, so let me just go ahead and uh, check the weather on the iPhone right here. So let me just pull up the weather app. Let's see if it can tell me the weather right now. Okay, 64 degrees, but uh, let's see if we can get it more accurately. 63 degrees in the bronze. How does it do I live in the hood? It must be conic sections. Check that out. What about parabolas? Well, parabolas are used everywhere, but most notably they're used all over in supermarkets and uh, security cameras use parabolas and parabolic mirrors to find where their customers are shopping. So these are most used in parabolic mirrors, okay? Parabolic mirrors. What else, what else, what else? The ellipse, well, hopefully you know that the ellipse is omnipresent in the solar system, okay? And in the universe, because nearly every orbit and nearly every planetary orbit, at least, is an ellipse, all right? With a planet at one foci and its moon or its own star and uh, orbiting around okay what else and of course the circle right the humble the famous the circle okay the circle is used everywhere namely of course the wheel right but hopefully i don't need to give you more examples of how the circle is used in our everyday life okay with that being said how can we actually make these conic sections in real life well let me go ahead and show you right now okay so here we have a class 3 laser 100 milliwatts. We're going to shine it on the table and try to see if we can produce any conic sections, all right? So first and foremost, what we're going to get is the humblest conic section of them all. This is the circle, ladies and gentlemen, okay? And now if we stretch the circle a bit, if we go ahead and bring the laser light closer to the table, we're going to get something resembling an ellipse, okay? This is an ellipse. And now bring it closer and closer to the table and you notice this ellipse almost explodes into a kind of parabola, right? Alright, so you've seen how we can use lasers to actually make conic sections in real life. But go ahead, let me go ahead and just show you this. Uh, check it out, check it out. So here we've got, what, a double napped cone. Can you see one of these bad boys? You've got a double napped cone, which is two cones kind of intersecting each other, right, at the, at the very pinpoint. And you can see how taking the cross section of those two cones can actually make all the, all the conic sections, right? Look at this one, what's the first one? The first one is the circle, right? You can see that we're actually making the circle by taking a flat cross section of the double napped cone. Look at the next one, what's the next one? What's the next one? Next one is an ellipse. You take your cone, you kind of rotate it, you kind of slant it, and what you get is an ellipse. And if you actually scroll down, you'll see that it makes an ellipse, an ellipse, right? What's the next one? After ellipse, we have parabola. And you can see a parabola is created when we take a slant cross section, but when one edge of the plane is out of the, uh, out of the cone, okay? And finally, how do you make the hyperbola? Hyperbola, hyperbola. That's the most exciting one, and you can see that the hyperbola is created as such, right? You take a cross section that intersects both cones at the same time, okay? And that's how the hyperbola is created. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now we're finally on to the last part. Let's go ahead and check out the formal standard equation for conic sections. All right, folks, that's the conclusion of lecture number one of Vector Calculus. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next